All right, hello there and welcome to another Blender tutorial. And in this one, we're gonna be covering the animation editor. So let's begin. All right, so here we are in Blender and we're going to be uh, looking at the animation editors. And to first start off, uh, to better help us understand this, I'm gonna show you guys um, a little bit about the keyframes first. We're first gonna uh, pull up our timeline editor right here. And if you don't see this, so if it's gone, you'll simply go right here till the cursor changes, right click, and then you will select a horizontal split click like this, and then select this editor and make it the timeline. All right, very good. Now uh, with the keyframes, all you have to do is simply uh, click on your object, press I, and then we'll select um, a keyframe for the scale. And then we'll go forward in time a little bit, and then we will raise up the scale. So press S, scale it up, press I again, and then we'll set another keyframe. Now if I go back to frame zero, we see that we have an animation. So that's a little bit about the keyframes. Now let's get into more of the editors. So I'm gonna split this area so that we can see a little bit better. And we will uh, select vertical split this time, like this, drag this over, and then we will go to the dope sheet. And the dope sheet basically shows you all of the different um, keyframes that you have in your scenes. So if I was to duplicate this, so Control D, you will see that the second cube appears and it shows me the keyframes in this one as well. All right, and if I duplicate it again, it's showing me all the keyframes in my scene with these objects. All right, so that's a little bit about the dope sheet. And you can actually um, edit these keyframes as well, so you can move them around like this and uh, make other adjustments. All right, and the next one that we have here is the timeline editor, and I'm not gonna click on this, but I'm actually going to just bring this up a little bit because it's already open down here. And how this works is that it basically shows you the keyframes on your selected object. So you will see that as I click, it's showing me the different object and the keyframes. All right, so if I was to move this over like this, it shows me the different ones. Okay. And over here, it shows you what uh, frame you're at. And then as well over here, you're able to uh, change what frame you want the playback to start at. So if I want it to start at frame five, it changes the endpoint right here. And if I wanted to end at frame, let's do 30, it changes the out point right here. And if I press play from here, notice that it starts at frame five and then it goes all the way to frame 30. All right, so that's very good. Now let us drag this down a little bit and we will switch this guy over to the graph editor. And I'm gonna delete some of these. So like this, zoom in a little bit right here. And we'll delete this uh, light as well and this camera. All right. Now over here, um, basically with the graph editor, we're able to um, manipulate our uh, keyframes with the curve handles. And we can actually uh, move the keyframes as well and their values from here. So um, let's say this keyframe right here. And let's say I wanted to adjust uh, how the animation comes in. So I would grab this handle like this. And now notice if I play it back, and we'll change the start to one. Notice that the animation is a lot different now. See? And if I was to say, uh, adjust it like this. Notice how the animation is changing. And with your keyframes, you have some other options over here as well to the right. And we'll cover this more in uh, future videos. All right, now the next one that we have here is the drivers editor. And basically how this works is that um, if we have two different objects, so let me go ahead and I will create a cylinder. A cylinder, press G to move it over, and I'll scale it up just a touch like this. And let's say I wanted to add a driver to this, so I will press N, and then on the scale for the X right here, I'll right click and then I'll say add driver like this. And then you will see that a driver has been added for the cylinder over here. And then I'll click on this X scale right here and I'll go over to the drivers and then I'll set the object to be my cube right here. So click on this uh, eyedropper, select the cube. And now the driver for the cylinder is connected to this cube right here. And then I can set uh, this type right here to be the rotation for uh, the cube. It's X rotation. 
And now, let me close this. And now this cube's rotation on its x-axis is going to affect the scale of the cylinder's x-axis. So, like this. Let's get a better view right here. You'll see that I'm rotating it on the x-axis and then it's affecting the cylinder's x-axis. So that's a little bit about how the drivers um, works. And in here we have a lot of different um, options with our drivers. And we'll cover this in depth as we get into later videos. And then the last one we're going to look at here is the nonlinear editor. And then basically this one here allows you to add multiple actions uh, to your objects. And we hope to cover this more when we get into animation. But uh, right now, just know that you're able to um, add multiple actions to objects with this editor. So that covers the animation editors. Uh, we hope that you learned something in this video and that you'll be able to um, use this information uh, wisely. And uh, if you like this video and you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe below and to click on the bell. And we will see you guys in the next one. Until next time.